Hi everybody, this video is for section 2.1, describing location in a distribution. And we'll start by taking a look at the question here. We have a student, Colton, who's taking his college entrance exams. He scored a 1330 on his SATs and a 31 on his ACTs. And be very natural for Colton to want to know on which test did he score better. Well, SATs have a mean and standard deviation, and ACTs have a different mean and standard deviation. So we want to be able to compare these two distributions and Colton's relative position within each distribution. So the goals of this section are to use percentiles to measure relative position, to compute and interpret something called the z-score, and to build and interpret a cumulative relative frequency graph. So to start, we're going to take a look at some classroom test scores here. This is a test in which Jenny scored an 86 on her test, and she would like to know how she performed on the test relative to her classmate. Well, we can see Jenny here, and we can see that she was better than 21 students, and three students had scores higher than Jenny did. Okay. And we can kind of categorize what Jenny did here by using the idea of a percentile. The definition is the pth percentile of a distribution is the value with p percent of the observations less than it or equal to it. So Jenny here, 22 of the 25 observations are less than or equal to Jenny's score. 22 out of 25 that Jenny is at the 88th percentile in the distribution of class test scores. How about a different student, Elvis? Elvis scored an 80 on his test. Now, I don't know which one Elvis is here, which 80 represents Elvis, and it turns out it doesn't matter. We want to know his percentile. So simply, we just need to count the number of scores less than or equal to Elvis's score. And by counting, we see that there are 14 of these. 14 out of 25 scored less than Elvis or equal to Elvis. Therefore, Elvis is at the 56th percentile. We can also try to assess how far above someone is from the mean. We have a mean of 80 and a standard deviation of 6. It means that Jenny was 6 points above the mean and Elvis was 0 points above the mean. Another way to say it is that Jenny's test score was one standard deviation above the mean. She was 6 above. Meanwhile, Elvis was right at the mean. Plus one is then called Jenny's z-score. Z-score is a measure of the number of standard deviations you lie above or below the mean score. Converting observations to standard deviation units is called standardizing. It's something we will do often, especially as we get later in the course. And a standardized value is often called a z-score. And the formula for z-score is quite easy to remember here. It's your score minus the mean divided by those standard deviations. So for Jenny, we take her score of 86, subtract it from 80, divide it by 6, because we're counting by 6s in the number line, we see that Jenny, Jenny had a z-score of 1. How about a different student? Let's say we have Kevin. He scored a 72. What's his z-score? Well, the first thing to note is that Kevin is definitely below the mean, so his z-score is going to be negative. He is more than one standard deviation away from the mean. He's more than 6 away from 80. And we can use the formula to see that Kevin is about 1.3 standard deviations below the mean. He has a z-score of negative 1.3. Another way to look at these is to try to look at these graphically. Here we have used ages at inauguration. Uh, I believe this is some old data. These are 44 presidents here and the number of presidents within each age grouping. One thing we can look at is the relative frequency. It's the proportion or the percentage of observations at each measurement. So we can just take each of these frequencies and divide them by 44, and we, we, we have these relative frequencies. So for example, 27.3% of the presidents were between 55 and 59 years of age. 6.8% were between 65 and 69 years of age. But if you think about these, we can take these and add these as well. We take 4.5 and 15.9, we can find the total percentage of presidents who were below age 49. And that is called the cumulative frequency and the cumulative relative frequency. And it just means add as you go along. And we can keep a running total of the frequencies and the percentages. So we need a few more columns for doing this. We just take these frequencies and add them. Two and then seven more presidents is nine. Thirteen more presidents gives us 22. And so on and so forth until all 44 presidents are accounted for. And then we divide these numbers by 44 to find the cumulative relative frequency. And it's important to be able to interpret these numbers. So for example, this number, 20.5%, means that 20.5% 20 of the presidents were age 49 or lower in inauguration. How about the 93.2? 93.2 
means 93% of the presidents were age 64 or below at inauguration. Okay, and think what kind of graph could we make and what would it look like? These numbers are definitely going up. We could plot them against each of the age ranges. And the type of graph we get is called a cumulative relative frequency graph. And that's a, a mouthful. There is another name for it called an ogive sometimes. But cumulative relative frequency does describe what's going on here. And the graph will look like this. So all we've done here is uh, age 40 to 44, we have 0%. And then we go up to 4.5% and then up to 20.5%, 50%, and so on and so forth until we are up to 100%. And the important thing for you to be able to do is to interpret what's going on here. So for example, this dot here, how could we interpret what's happening here? Well, we seem to be at age 60, and it seems to link over to about 78%. So we could say that a president who is age 60 is at the 78th percentile. He's as old or older than 78% of the presidents. How about age 52? Well, we can draw that line as well. What's the percentile for age 52? President age 52 is at about the 30th percentile, and it's okay to eyeball these things as long as you're kind of in the ballpark and you're clearly using the graph to make your interpretation. Okay, so Z-score, percentile, ogives, all part of the things we need to know for section 2.1.